Welcome back to another video and well, today we shall keep on talking about some interactions with different objects. So in the yesterday's video I showed you some very basics about line tracing, overlapping, hit events and etc. This is the code that we have created in the previous video. But obviously, well, this system isn't perfect um, because let's say, for example, right now we have this one cube that we want to interact with. Let's duplicate this one. I'm using Ctrl W to duplicate and let's call this another, another blueprint. There we go. Let's open this up. I'm going to change the shape of this one. So right now the static mesh is a cube. Let's change this to a, let's change this to a sphere. There we go. So right now we have two different actors, but the thing is that, well, this isn't going to work for this actor. As you can see, it does not change the color. These ones still do, just like we made in the previous video, but the spheres don't. And that is because in our third person character, where we have the change material event, we are casting to only to the new blueprint. We are not casting to the another blueprint. So what we could technically do is whenever we would overlap, we would return to this one to the cast failed. And I can show you that by printing a hello on failed. So if I overlap, you can see, hello, hello, hello. This one changes the color. This one says hello. So whenever the actor fails the cast, it goes through this route. Technically, what we could do is then cast to another blueprint, use the same actor as the reference because it is going to return that unit that we have overlapped. And then we could then again set the mesh to have the different material. For that, though, we need to get uh, the static mesh from this actor right here. So we can get the mesh, connect to the target, connect the execution. Now, this is going to work just fine now. So if we overlap, you can see all of them are changing their colors. But let's say we have like 100 of different actors that we want to interact with. Are we really that interested in creating all of these cast to nodes? Probably not, because that's a lot of work. And if something goes wrong, that's a lot of debugging. So this is where the blueprint interfaces come into place. So now if we would go to our content browser, right click, go to the blueprint section. And right here we have the blueprint interface. Let's create one and let's call this interact interface. Let's open this one up. And basically what this does is creates like custom events kind of. And they are called functions over here because you can input and output information. But for now, let's just create a very, very simple one. So let's call this start interaction. So start interaction. We don't need to really provide anything. If you want to give the data to this thing, then you can uh, add parameters. I'm not going to do that right now. Now to make this thing work, what we need to do is attach this interface to our actors. So let's open up both of our actors. So we have the new blueprint and the uh, another blueprint. Let's go to our class settings of that blueprint. And here on the right side, we can then add a new interface. Let's look for our interact interface. There we go. After we add this interface, we always got to make sure that we recompile this blueprint. Otherwise, this interface event is not going to be uh, available to us just yet. We need to recompile this. So then what we can do is look for our event start interaction. There we go. So we have this thing. It also has this icon that this is an interface. And this is exactly the same function we just added over here. We can't really do any blueprint stuff over here because this just creates as a um, function that we can then reuse in our actors. Now, technically what we could do is just simply get our mesh and then we could set the material over here. So let's, let's do that right now. So let's set our material. And so this is the old one. This is the cube. Let's make this green like so. And now let's go to our other blueprint. Let's do the same thing, class settings add the interact interface, recompile the blueprint, and then let's have our event start interaction. There we go. And then we can again drag in our static mesh and set the material to a different one. You could technically do a different code as of right now, uh, but well, I'm just working with the materials. So let's set up this one to be a blue one. So now whenever we will overlap any of our actors, we are going to cast to our third person character and we are going to run our change material. Now, instead of casting and doing this whole code over here, what we can do is delete this whole thing, right click and look for start interaction message. So the message is 
available to you throughout the whole, uh, basically throughout the, the whole project. It's going to be available everywhere, but the event itself is going to be only available in the actors that have this interface attached to them. So now if we would connect the execution and connect the actor to the target, what you will see is that, well, these objects are going to do different things. So this one is turning to green like it did before, but this one now can change to blue. And this makes our life a lot easier because then we don't have to cast two million different actors. We can just simply run our start interaction and it's going to look for that specific target that we interacted with and it's going to run its start interaction. Because for example, for one object, you might want to do one thing, for a different one, you might want to do something else. Also, if you are running the overlap event, Technically, you don't even have to cast your character. What you could do is, well, it, it depends on what exactly you want to do. But technically, you could just simply start the interaction. Interaction. So we can start interaction. There we go. Uh, make sure that the target is self if you want this start interaction to work in this specific actor. Otherwise, then again, you need to provide the reference to the actor that you want to start this interaction in. So this is only for the new blueprint. So now, as you can see, these cubes are doing the same thing that they did before, except for, well, now we don't even need to cast to our character. We can just simply run it over here. You could create a custom event for that as well, but the interfaces are mostly used because if you are performing a task in a different uh, actor, basically if a different actor wants to start some kind of a task, then you can use this interaction uh, and then, yeah, no more cast nodes. Also, these interfaces are, can be used to return some information. So, for example, let's select our start interaction node and then let's create an output for this one. And let's say we want to put out the material that we added. So, let's create a material interface. Object type is going to be material interface. Those are the materials that are getting used. Uh, so, all the materials are material interfaces. And then for the output, let's call this material. There we go. Now we can compile and save this. Now, if we would go back to our new blueprint, you can see this is giving us a warning and this is now just a custom event. That is because it has an output. So this is no longer going to work. So let me just real quick reconnect these things back the way they were like this. So that we would cast to our character so that we actually have a use for this interface in general. And then we can run our change material. We can then delete this custom event and I'm just going to copy out the set material node with control X, save this. And now in the interfaces on the left, we have this start interface and we can double click this. And this is just like a regular function. So we can then paste in our code that we have. And if we right click and look for a return node, now we are able to return the material that we have. So let's make sure we change the material first. And then from the static mesh, let's get the material that we have so we can get material and since this one only uses one material the index is always going to be zero and then from the return value we can plug it into here now we must do the same thing for the other one as well so i'm just going to copy with the uh, return node as well go to the other delete this punch double click on start interaction and paste this in there we go all good I'm going to delete this node and now if we would go back to our third person character you can see that our start interaction is giving us a material output so we can just print out its name so we can plug that into print string and now this is going to print us out the name of that material you can output any information that you might want these things do come in really handy uh, because well you often do want to pass along information so this is the color mat uh, actually, both of them are called color mats. So this was a very bad example for that. So let me just, for the other material, let's make this into the gem instance instead. So now you can see, so this is color mat, and then this is gem instance. Here we go. So these interfaces are really cool. They do come in handy very often. I do use them all the time. And probably, well, if you are following or will be following any of my series, you will see me use these things very often. Now, another thing that I want to mention real quick is that you can add as many functions to this interface as you want. So, for example, if you want to have like a output interaction, you can add that. Then you can also add another function and let's call this 
no input uh, interact for example and then you can run this and it's gonna have no inputs and you can have as many functions as you like and all of them are going to be available inside your actors that have this interface attached to them and obviously this interface can be ran with any of the previous methods that we used before uh, it can be ran after we spawn an object after we do a line trace it doesn't matter because it works exactly the same thing as the cast did uh, so we can even after so for example if we spawn an object let's and i'm gonna even leave uh, remove that save actor thingy we we don't need it we can just simply as soon as we spawn an actor we can run our start interaction so if we press play you can see as soon as i click i you can see it spawns it already green because as soon as we spawn it that interaction is getting ran and the task is getting done so there we go that's gonna be it for the interactions hope you learned something new hope this was helpful uh, if you haven't subscribed make sure you do and i see you in the next one